I am getting a lot of questions via all the different social media outlets that I happen to be on my 2d body right <laughs> I call it my 2d body uh, and I'm getting lots of questions in regards to juice fasting which is uh, very positive very good I'm really glad I've been talking about it recently you know being on liquids and going on a fast for a certain period and maybe slowly transitioning into that type of lifestyle because it's just lighter and your body becomes this detoxification machine you feel lighter etc uh, and I'm really glad that a lot of you guys are asking are asking questions you're very interested it means you're you've already taken the first step to lighten up okay lighten up and in this video I'm not going to talk about how to prepare or technicalities I've answered some of you guys's questions uh, but however nevertheless uh, I am I am going to make a video very soon expect it within a week from this video whenever this video is uploaded about how to comprehensively prepare and do a juice fast okay so just keep an eye for that because my own experience is teaching me some things and I'd like to go a little bit deeper into it before I could share with you something that is going to be comprehensive and cover everything that you need to know and do to carry something out something out like a juice fast successfully because believe me it is kind of an art and uh, it's lots of ups and downs and you learn through experience so why should you let's understand the why because I feel like if you really understand the why then you'll be that much more enticed to do it and I've always found that if I have the wisdom the understanding of something that's it I could just carry it out you know I, that's just I'm a little bit into my head into my mind and I kind of need to understand something if I have the wisdom if it clicks that's it no need for willpower no need for anything it's it's a done deal okay and uh, you know Buddha emphasized on that he called it in the eightfold path right view if you have the right perception the right view the action follows because the mental understanding comes mind creates matter matter is your actions your actions happen in the physical matter in the physical plane so then your actions just simply follow they become just natural and harmonious and you don't have to use your willpower so why why should you detoxify yourself why should you uh, go on a juice fast on a water fast or maybe a fruit fast you know there's different levels of detoxification for another video okay juicing is pretty powerful the next step up would be water fasting and, and up from there would be dry fasting and dry fasting is the most powerful but also uh, you know it's very difficult okay you really need to clear up everything from your life uh, and I'll tell you some days on a juice fast on the days where I kind of buckle up the belt uh, it kind of becomes a little bit difficult even to wake up in the morning and teach the kids because my, my body just goes into this full detox and all it wants to do is rest and just lay down uh, so you know but juice fasting is is pretty good for a modern human being because we've got stuff to do right we all got we've all plugged into the matrix in one way or another we've got we've got stuff to do you know water fasting is a little more difficult and then you know dry fasting again you usually just take a complete vacation off of everything so juice fasting is, is a good middle ground anyway this is all for a different video uh, what I would want to ex talk about specifically here is why should you and I'd like to start off with using an example uh, to demonstrate to you why it's very crucial for you to begin this process of healing of, of getting all this th these toxins that are laying dormant in your body out of you so you could experience new levels of vitality and health and raise up the bar because it is not we're not supposed to be sleeping for eight hours every day because that just means we're so inefficient. We're eating the wrong foods. Uh, we're, we're breathing too much. It, it's, and we're not supposed to. That's just the reason why science came up with eight hours a day because the whole population is so sick and parasitic that we all need eight hours. So they figure you take a sample of people and you see that the healthiest people are the ones that sleep eight hours because God damn it, look at how sick the society is. We need so much sleep just to make up for all the toxicity and parasites that we have laying inside of us and all the wrong foods that we're eating. So I was trying to save that rant for the later part of the video, but it just came out. Anyway, the example that I would like to use is, uh, it's a personal example. I, from time to time, will go and meditate in a Buddhist monastery. And the minute you walk into the monastery, 
you feel at ease, you feel peaceful, you feel calm. And I swear to you, within five minutes of sitting down and you know, beginning the meditation, it's a vipassana, right? So you just watch your breath. Within within about five minutes of sitting there and beginning the, the meditation, they'll usually start, they'll have their bowl and they'll just kind of hit it and you get this done and then you begin. Within about five minutes of beginning the meditation, closing my eyes, focusing on my breath, I immediately begin to experience uh, visuals and white lights. Go figure. What's going on here? I immediately go into the state of bliss and I begin to see the you know, geometric shapes and white lights begin to light up my third eye. No psychedelics, no microdosing, nothing. Okay, nothing like that. It's the stuff you see on psychedelics, but I'm just like, here I am sitting in this place and five minutes, I'm experiencing it. What's going on here? Well, what's going on here is you've got these monks that live there that have dedicated this place because they want to get closer to who they are and they really want to purify themselves and they really want to reach these higher states and they really want enlightenment. So this place becomes so holy that the consciousness of the place becomes so holy that praying there is just so easy. Connecting there with the divine uh, with the divine is just so easy. And the, and the place is right in the middle of a city, in fact, on a major street. And you, as you're sitting, you can hear cars going by. But that particular place where the monks live, it, they've got the incense, they've got Buddha images all around. You know, you've got these people around you. It's a group meditation. So you've got the monks, you've got the people around you. They're all coming here for the same reason. It's such a holy place that it creates this cloud around it, this mass consciousness around it, where it's just so benevolent, so loving, so kind. And you sit there within five minutes, you're off into the astral plane, you're off into geometric shapes, and you're off to visions, and you're off to whatever it is your trip is. You're seeing white lights. It's crazy. It's crazy. So what is happening here is this is a temple. So this is a temple. That's why a holy place is, oh, you always feel so tingly and good. And you walk into a holy place and you just like get high. You literally get high. Literally, literally. It's like immediately, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I've just, I, I, I dropped some acid like instantly, you know, within five minutes. Like, you know, it's, it's just amazing. So the mass consciousness there, it's dedicated. It's very easy to pray. No, the, the state of immediate ease. Okay, so then your body is the temple. It's the monastery. And your soul is experiencing itself in this temple for a little while. The soul, consciousness, Brahman, Atman, is in the soul for a little while experiencing physical existence, experiencing itself in that particular form. And do you really think it's going to be able to express itself freely and be in a state of ease and creativity if the temple stinks, if the temple is full of garbage laying all around? Do you think if I walk into that monastery and it stinks and like there's garbage everywhere and there's like bugs, you know, all kinds of bugs and mosquitoes and everything, do you think I'm going to be able to close my eyes and within five minutes go into these blissful altered states of consciousness? Hell no! Hell no! Of course not! It's a dirty temple. In fact, I'd walk in and walk out. They wouldn't have anybody coming in for their, for their meditation group sessions. Nobody would come in. So nobody would be able to experience that bliss because the temple is just so dirty. And so, so that's why holy places are always like this. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I would go to, uh, we'd go to Mecca often. Uh, and Mecca is like the holiest Muslim place. And uh, when we, whenever we left, I would just like cry for hours. Because I just like, as a kid, you just know, you know vibes. And I was just like, oh, this is amazing. I love being there. I just love being there. Every time we left, I just cry, like just keep crying. And because we used to go once a year and the whole year I'd ask my mom, when are we going again? When are we going again? When are we going again? Uh, so, yeah. And so your body is that holy temple. And if you would like to experience states of bliss, if you would like to experience union with Brahman, 
if you would like to experience joy, if you would like to feel that if you are naturally high on psychedelics, if you would like to, I always use that reference because a lot of you guys, you know, you've done psychedelics before, you have that reference point, so it's very easy for you to know what I'm talking about. That's what psychedelics are very helpful in that way because they show you a reference point and they show you the potential. If you really want to uh, express yourself, be creative, be full of energy, full of joy, you better damn well have a clean temple. And we've got to have new standards for what a clean temple is. So, clue number one, if you're needing eight, nine hours of sleep a night, you're very unhealthy, period. If, you feel, if, if your body isn't waking up on its own after, say, five hours, beaming with energy, like every day, consist consistently, day in, day out, there's something wrong with you. That you've got something, some parasite or something, and I'm pretty much talking to almost 100% of everybody watching this, you know? Uh, me not excluded so uh, that's a clue right there okay so so you know you shouldn't be getting that much sleep it's just that means you're eating the wrong foods you've got lots of toxins lots of parasites and look guys so you know just to put things into context you know you're not you're not really guilty of any of this ne nobody is it's just the way it is is like this world is so parasitic that you know <laughs> All the kids come here crying because it's like they almost know, holy fuck, we just came to one of the shittiest holes in the, co in, in the amusement park. I mean, the planet is very beautiful. It's just like because humans are sort of the caretakers of the planet and they fucked up, you know, so that it, be, it became this uh, horrendous place, you know, because we're the caretakers, we're the apex, we're, we are the caretakers of the planet. So if we, if we are, if we are faulty then everything is faulty and all the animals are faulty too and that's why like everything is in a state of dis-ease in, in the, on the planet uh, so it's like the kids know this and they come here crying everybody comes here crying so you're vaccinated immediately uh, all kinds of nasty things are put into you your antibiotics the first like five six years of your life you don't even have any control in it and yeah you pretty much you're off you're you're dealt you're already at a disadvantage here Okay, and then uh, you know you're eating all kinds of nasty plummy plastic. We all pretty much practically grew up on plastic, eating plastic. Well, pr practically all. I mean, you'll be really lucky if you were born into a family that ate fruits and vegetables, and that's all you ate. But that's such a rare. That's like it's like trying to find a dragon or something. You know, that's so rare. So you're. I, I mean, I grew up eating plastic plastic okay just just plastic for the most part okay I mean, that's all that's all this food is this 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 mainstream food plastic my breakfast for the first 22 years of my life was milk so that's the glue and cereal this is basically plastic glue and plastic I ate that's for my breakfast and for 22 years okay and I can go on about all kinds of nasty foods that I ate I only stopped eating that flesh that de that that is decaying, that takes two three days to pass through your your uh, digestive tract. I only stopped that six months ago. And just before I started this juice fast, I talked about it in the previous video. I was kind of just kind of going on all these nut butter binges and all kinds of cookies and plastic stuff. I mean, really, really, it's uh, uh it's quite a predicament that we're all in. Uh, but luckily, even though this place is kind of a shithole. Uh, but still, because it is within consciousness, uh, so there is a healing mechanism within the planet itself and within, and since your body is, is from the planet, from the earth, then it heals itself. And luckily, that's very, you know, uh, consciousness is benevolent in that way. So although certain parts of the amusement park are pretty horrendous, uh, earth currently in its state being one of them, uh, but still, that healing force in the universe is everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. And so it, it, it will always heal. It will always sort of clean up the mess. So if you would like to experience bliss, joy, and really have the soul express itself fully, just like walking into a monastery or a holy place, a holy mosque, a holy church, and just feeling that sense of ah, oh, ah, oh, you know, or just being in the sun, you know, same thing. Or some beautiful place in nature, you know, some somewhere pure and raw. Uh, then you, you really want to start cleaning up your body, and you want to have a new standard. And just to give you an idea of what a standard of good health looks like, 
you need four hours of sleep, five hours of sleep a night, you're waking up 25 out of 30 days every month. Let's say you, we'll give you five days a pass. But you're waking up 80 to 90% of the time, all the time, every day, 80 to 90%. After four or five hours, like, holy shit, I got so much energy, I don't even know what to do with it. That's the standard of health. And if that's not your situation, then you've got some work to do. Okay, you really have got some work to do. Uh, and yeah, yeah, if you, I mean, fatigue is just a disease, this ease, it's just uh, the absence of ease. Just like darkness is the absence of light. This ease is an illusion, it doesn't exist. So you should be, you know, Wim Hof says our natural state is happiness, strength, and health. There is another example of you of what optimal health looks like. The Iceman Wim Hof is a very good example. Okay, and I think he mentioned in one of his, you know, on Reddit that he sleeps five hours a night. I mean, he doesn't need it. The guy is just like so high up the, uh, you know, the, whatever, the equation, this equation that we're talking about. Uh, I mean, he's got a pretty clean diet. I know he's, he smokes cigarettes from time to time. He likes beer. But, uh, you know, I've seen enough documentaries on the guy. And, uh, you know, the, the Vice documentary, you could see that... Uh, uh, they go to his house. You could see that all he eats, pretty much his family, is like mostly fruits. You could just see it on his uh, in his house, like it's it's on the table, right? So you know, you've got to really take care of yourself, and you've got to really have a new standard for what health looks like, right? And your body should be so efficient that even if you decide to indulge in a beer or two, a cigarette here and there. A uh, piece of chocolate, whatever it is, a piece of plastic, that you you, you know you're at a lot such a high level of health that your body will just deal with it like it's nothing. You know, that's the only time you could really afford to indulge in these things every now and then is when you're fully, fully healed, where you fully reach that optimal vitality, that total healing, what Arnold Eret calls total healing, and. Uh, until then, if the temple isn't clean, the soul isn't really going to be able to pray as effectively. You can sit here and meditate all you want. You could do all this spiritual work. It'll help a little bit, but you'll always still be thinking about, you know, your stomach will hurt. I mean, the problem is, if your gut is screwed, which is like pretty much, again, mostly everybody watching this, uh, then the energy can't rise up so you could do all the meditation you want you could do all these things they'll help but it's like you're moving at a turtle space whereas if you clean up the temple now it's so easy to pray if your temple is totally clean you probably just like how I go to the monastery and within five minutes I'm in this blissful state probably you just close your eyes and you're already in a blissful state as opposed to trying to sit here for two hours and, and get to this blissful state you know, you just kind of clean up the temple and then within five minutes of closing your eyes, here you are in La La Land. You see how crucial it is? You see why I'm, I'm, I'm really talking about this a lot lately? You see why I'm doing it? I'm sort of living it? I only share with you guys what I live, okay? What, what is, I won't just tell you something that I, I'm not experiencing, I'm not doing. Uh, you see why I'm sort of, why the channel right now is focused on that particular part of being a human being, being a soul in, in, in a human vehicle, having a human experience, because it's really very, 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 very important. It, it is very, very important. Again, you could sit here, meditate for two hours and reach some very high blissful states, okay? And you could just still be, you know, fatigued and tired and eating all kinds of nasty stuff and you've got all this acidity and toxicity and mucus. Maybe you do two hours of meditation here your knee will probably hurt, this will hurt, that will hurt, but you'll learn how to get through it. Okay, two hours later, I'm experiencing, you know, nice, this is blissful, I'm at ease. You know, you're aware of your knees hurt, this hurt, but how about this, if your temple's clean, you sit here, you can't even feel your body, it's so light and, and uh, beautiful, it's like, ah, uh, it's so nice. And you close your eyes, and what would have taken you two, three hours is already achieved within five minutes. Again, this is the same thing as walking into a Buddhist monastery. My experience of it is within five minutes, I'm um, in La La Land. Okay, so understand, understand also that you're unhealthy. You have to understand that you, 
you know, you're, you're, you're filthy. I, I'm filthy. I'm, I'm filthy. You're filthy. Just understand that. Once you accept how filthy you are, how much filth you have inside of you, uh, then now we know the worst type of prison is the prison where you don't know you're in prison. Okay, that's the worst type of slavery. That's the worst type of prison. At least if you know you're in prison, we know everybody played their cards on the table. We know where everybody stands. But if you don't know you're in prison, and this is the predicament of the human population at the moment, the mass of the human population is they don't know they're in prison. See, before, back in the days when the Roman Empire had one third of the, of the Roman population was uh, slaves, that one third knew that they were slaves. But now we have 95% of the population is slaves, but they don't know that they're slaves. You see? Uh, and that's the worst type of prison. So you have to understand first that you're, you know, you have to have a new reference point for what health is, and then you work your way up from there. Because look, if I, you know, I could have just basically what I've done for the last few years, because you know, you live in a society and you're, you, whether you know it or not, you're constantly gauging your performance to the relative to the rest of the society. Uh, probably for the last five, six years, I have been, uh, I'm in the top 5%, uh, healthy individuals in in any society that you put me in okay that's probably my case for the last five years I'm in the top five percentile no questions about it and that's kind of why I, I kind of been taking it easy kind of you know I haven't really been uh, paying too much attention into this stuff I've been doing lots of binges here and there because I was just kind of like comfortable I was like you know what this is all subconscious right like I'm, I'm healthier than most people you know I've I'm, I'm always known as the guy with the lots of energy, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's got lots of energy, you know, because relative to the society, you know, I, I am healthier. I, so more energy is flowing through me until I began to understand new levels of health, new levels of vitality uh, by slowly beginning to experience them for myself. And, and you know I, that kind of started with psychedelics because I understand how important it is to prepare so before a big psychedelic trip I would just really do like lots of intermittent fasting I would eat little and then I'd come at trip I'd feel like I'm God I feel like this ex insane expanded energy and through doing that uh, you know consistently and through also microdosing I start to realize holy shit the potential I'm like oh wait my normal state I'm actually not healthy at all at all like no there's way more there's way more energy here to go there like I'm, I'm experiencing very little of my potential because as it turns out I am pure energy you are pure energy and so then of course that now begins the new phase of absolutely cleaning up the temple uh, to the point where I reach total healing and I'll know I'll know because at some point of doing this consistently and long term I'll probably again get to that point where I'm sleeping four or five hours a night and I'm just I have so much energy I don't even know what to do with it and throughout this juice fasting because you do experience detox symptoms if yeah, you will experience them believe me uh, but some days when my body sort of cleans some toxins and it was for a little while like very clean before beginning dumping more toxins into the bloodstream I was experiencing that God state and I was sitting here and looking at the sun and sun gazing and crying and feeling like, wow, I got a lot of energy. And so I've experienced this now a few times throughout the juice fast and I'm in the early stages of it and believe me, I got a lot of toxins in there, I'm pretty filthy. Uh, so yeah, it's good to have that new reference point and work towards it, okay? So now hopefully you watch this whole video, you have a, a good understanding of why you should do it so hopefully that prompts you to do some research you could look up into John Rose uh, Robert Morse uh, Dr. Spira Dr. Professor Prof Spira Dr. Sebi life regenerator there's a lot of, a lot of you know amazing healers out there on YouTube spreading these these messages uh, you could look into them and keep an eye for my videos uh, because I will, I will, I will make probably my next video in regards to this particular topic will be how to prepare and how to go through uh, a juice fast, okay? And also, I want to make another video comparing water fasting and juice fasting and their pros and cons, both of them. Okay, so that's for the future. Keep an eye for these videos, and thank you to all the Patreons for having continuous, continuously supporting this channel. Uh, and really, every time I get a new Patreon, it's not so much that. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we have more funding or anything, but it's just like 
wow, we're, we're getting more people here that are believing in this message, uh, that are getting value out of, them, of this message, and they're getting such good insights about life that they're actually willing to get out their credit card and take five minutes and put in a certain amount of money. And it's just sort of the sentiment that sort of uplifts me. So if you would like to become part of the Patreon family, pledge as little as $2 a month. That's it, that's all it takes. And it takes five minutes of your time. Okay, okay, okay. So get off your ass and do it. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation, there's something personal or impersonal, something specific about anything really. You know, I cover a wide range of topics and therefore I am open to talk about a wide range of things. Uh, the link for the consultation bookings is also down below in the description. And I love you guys. Until next time, may the force be with you.